<laughs> Could this be the easiest way to improve your health? Stay tuned and let's dive in. Hello friends. As you probably know, health is something that Rebecca and I are very, very passionate about. Mental, physical, emotional. And last year we were reading a book by James Nestor called Breath because we wanted to learn more about how we could use breathing, this thing that we're all doing all the time, more consciously, as a road towards better health. Well, way in the back of that book, buried in the notes, we found this reference to humming. And what we read there seemed a little bit too good to be true. We almost ignored it until we started doing some research. And we found that not only is humming part of an ancient tradition that has led towards better health, but recent science is starting to show that there really may be something to this. I will be linking to some research studies down in the description of this video. How we breathe is vitally important. It affects our whole system. And for a lot of us, well, we've grown up breathing like this. And this mouth breathing is something that we tend to do when we're stressed and it exacerbates the stress response. So when I'm breathing like that chronically, well, just doing it right there does not feel good to me. And over time, we can start to tangibly feel the difference between when we are mouth breathing and when nose breathing. One of the keys to why nose breathing is so healthy is that when air is passing through our nasal cavity, the tissues there generate something called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is present through our whole body. It's, it's very, very important. And it regulates a host of activities within our body. Like many other things, it's not necessarily a more is better. There is a balance of nitric oxide, which is optimal in the body. But because so many of us are stressed, because so many of us breathe often through our mouths, we don't get a lot of that nitric oxide. Enter nose breathing. When we breathe through our nose, the tissues are stimulated and we generate more of that nitric oxide right there in our nasal cavity. That's carried down into our lungs and it starts to bring us closer to that equilibrium. But still, even if I have a conscious nasal breathing practice, if I'm living a regular life in this world we live in, then I'm probably still going to be doing nasal breathing only for a percentage and often a small percentage of my total breathing. What that means is that we often need a little extra boost. And that is where humming can get pretty magical. An initial study came out that said when we hum, we generate 15 times more nitric oxide than when we're just nasal breathing. Now, that is what you're going to see almost all of the YouTube videos talk about, is that 15 times more. There was another study that came out that gave more modest numbers of about seven times. But even if we could just double it, that would be something special. And the cool thing is that this humming, even if it doesn't have all the other benefits I'm going to talk about today, you're going to find that it has a very clear and obvious benefit. And that is that it relaxes us and it adds to our meditation. If you have a mindfulness practice of any kind and you add this humming in, you're gonna find that it's much easier to have your mind be in a place of relative stillness rather than if you're just trying to, for instance, watch your breath. Today I'm gonna to share with you some of the benefits of this humming and an easy practice so that you can incorporate this into your life and give it a try for yourself. Rebecca and I probably had those doubts when we first read those notes in the back of Nestor's book because we are subject to something that a lot of us are subject to. We live in a world where we are told that health comes from the outside. So it's exemplified, of course, in the pharmaceutical industry. Something's wrong with you, take a pill. It's very different if we think that the body has its own wisdom. The body has its own strength. 
and it is going to find its way and evolve through almost anything we can throw at it. This, I think, is the truth, but we are forgetting that truth as we learn more and more to depend on those outside sources of health. Ages ago, the yogis had practices called pranayama. These are breathing exercises, and they harnessed one of the body's natural tools, our breath, and said, if we don't just let this be on autopilot, if we are conscious about our breathing, we can derive different effects. And we know today that, of course, we can use hyperventilation and very quick breathing to bring on almost psychedelic effects. We can use breathing to calm ourselves before a stressful event. And breathing increasingly is being shown to be tied to our overall health. An intriguing study that I saw looked at humming and how it relates to our stress levels. So they were using a stress index and they looked at humming, sleep, exercise, and actually putting people under emotional stress to see what happened. Humming, out of all those, turned out to be the best tool to lower that stress index. It's likely that humming positively affects our HRV. If you're not sure what HRV is, this is our heart rate variability. It used to be thought that a strong heart was just an even heart that stayed the same all the time, the pulse. But we have learned since that when we look at high level athletes, they have a lot of heart rate variability. People that are not in good physical shape or not in good emotional shape will not have good heart rate variability. This humming increases our heart rate variability. It also seems to stimulate the vagus nerve. Now this vagus nerve has nothing to do with gambling. It has to do with our brain's connection with many of our organs in our body. And the vagus nerve is often referenced as the key to relaxation, because when that nerve is stimulated, our parasympathetic nervous system is stimulated. That is the opposite of fight or flight. That's our rest, relax, digest response. When that is activated in our body, we feel relaxed. We feel clear. We are cognitively stronger. We have a better memory. Our mood is different. We even just feel better. A lot of this might owe its efficacy to nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is this amazing chemical that has all of these powerful effects in our bodies. It's a vasodilator, meaning that it opens up our bloodstream. And as it dilates the blood vessels, that decreases blood pressure and leads again to a feeling of relaxation. It's also a bronchiodilator. If you have had asthma and you take a, a puff of your, I uh, can't think of what the drug is right now, that opens up your lungs essentially. And that's the same thing that the nitric oxide does. Now, not as graphically as that drug does, but it increases oxygenation throughout our body. Now think of that increasing oxygenation and increasing blood flow. Now we've got a good thing starting. Add to that that nitric oxide is antimicrobial, antifungal, and anti-inflammatory. And we're putting a pretty good substance into our body. And this is all generated naturally, just with breathing correctly. Now the first thing we can do is just to nose breathe. And this is powerful in and of itself. There's an easy tool that you can use to nose breathe more often. I used to try to nose breathe, concentrate on doing it. Well, guess what? My mind wouldn't hold on to that. And before long, I'd be breathing through my mouth again without even knowing, especially if I was feeling stressed. The simple tool is just close your mouth. If you keep your mouth closed, you will automatically breathe through your nose. And it's not something that we have to remember with each breath the way we do with the nose breathing. We can just feel our lips together 
and keep them there. Do that and you will increase your nitric oxide levels right away, all day long. And if we do this in combination with another breathing practice, especially with this humming practice, then we've got a good baseline that we're growing just through our nasal breathing. And we add this boost by doing this practice just a couple times a day. And this practice also is pretty easy. All we're doing is we're humming. When we hum, we're going to vibrate those tissues and increase more nitric oxide. I'm going to give you a special way to do this, but you don't have to do it in a special way. If you are just sitting somewhere and you want to quietly hum to yourself, then I'm going to show you the very basic, basic way to do it right now. And I'll give you the more advanced version after that. The basic way is that we close our mouth, as we just talked about. We inhale in through our nose and we hum out through our nose. Do that whenever it works for you. People might look at you a little strange if you're doing that in public, but you can do it on a bus. You can do it when you're taking a few minutes for a mindfulness practice. You can do it when you're waiting in line, walking down the street, laying on the beach. Very, very easy to do and powerful effects. Try it. And I think if you do that alone, you're going to find that you feel better. You feel more relaxed. And as winter comes on here, I'm going to guess that you're not going to get sick as much because those antimicrobial, antiviral properties are going to be acting in your nose, in your throat, where many of our initial viruses come in and start to do their work. Now the more advanced practice, and I promise this isn't too hard either. In fact, if you do this for about five minutes, twice a day, make it into a mindfulness practice where you sit down, do this breathing exercise, this humming exercise, you're gonna increase your benefits a lot. Here's what we do. We sit down, relax, and we're going to breathe in through our nose and choose your count. I'm going to choose a count of four, 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 like a form of box breathing. If you have really good breath control, you can have those be tens if you want, whatever your count is going to be, but try four. That tends to be a good one for beginners and see how it works for you. I'm going to breathe in through my nose for four, one, two, three, four. Then I'm going to hold for four, one, two, three, four. Now I'm going to hum out for four. Hmm. Then I'm going to hold for four and back in. Repeat that for five minutes and you have this more advanced version of a humming exercise. Now you can tweak this to be even more advanced. And again, this still isn't too tough. What you're going to do is you're going to find your count in. So for me, I might be using a count of 10. I won't make you sit here for my count of 10. I'll breathe slowly in through my nose for the count of 10. Then I'm going to hold gently for a count of 10. And gently, if this is feeling stressy, that's not going to be helpful. So make sure you can do this, whatever your count is, easily. And that it feels soft and relaxed and gentle. Then I'm going to hum out. And I'm not going to count the hum. I'm just going to hum out until my lungs feel like they're about 80% empty. Then I'm going to hold. And I'm not going to hold until there's any stress at all. You might be able to hold for a 10 comfortably if you have really good breath control. But otherwise, if it's just a second or two down there, hold it for just a second or two, and then breathe in again for whatever your count is. So again, I'm breathing in for my count, I'm holding for my count, then I'm breathing out while I hum through my nose, all of this done with the mouth closed. As long as that hum goes, I can extend that out for 20, 30 seconds if it feels right to you. And then a shorter hold on the bottom, breathe in again. And again, repeat this for five minutes or 10 minutes longer, 
better, but keep it in a place where it's going to feel easeful and comfortable and fun for you. Two other tweaks that are going to take this over the top. The one is to notice where that hum is happening. This is a little bit subtle, but I'm sure you can pick up on it. I am going to hum, and I'm going to feel the difference between the humming feeling like it's coming back in my throat and the humming feeling like it's tickling my nasal cavity. And that's what I'm going for. I want to feel that vibration in my nasal cavity, up in my nose. And so you want to feel it back behind. And I'll say when you capture this feeling, you're going to feel an immediate sense of relaxation. There's something about this that is so calming. And so I hum, mm, it's back in my throat, mm, and I'm just adjusting my palate a little bit, and that's going to change where that sound is going. I think it's probably what's happening back there is we're adjusting from the sound waves coming out into our mouth and then kind of being directed up into the nose just by changing our, our palate, the muscles in your back of your throat. And it should be gentle, relaxed, but you will feel that shift when it happens. The second tweak is that the pitch seems to matter. There's some research that's been done that's showing that different pitches affect how much that vibration is happening in your nose and thus affect how much nitric oxide is released. And 130 hertz around in there tends to be the most effective from current research. That may change over time as we learn more about this, but it's something that I often shoot for when I do this. I'm going to hum that pitch for you right now. Well, about that pitch. And if you get anything in this ballpark range, in the studies they did when people were quite a bit below or quite a bit above this, they still were generating a lot of nitric oxide. But if you aim for this pitch, then you might be on the golden note. So humming, who knew that doing something so simple could make such a difference in our lives? For me, I feel like this has reduced the amount that I'm sick and the duration of sickness. Again, especially as winter comes, this is something that I think of doing more often to make sure that I'm not laying in bed too often come winter time, and for just an overall feeling of goodness and mindfulness. These mindfulness practices, these calming practices, are so vital in today's world, where there can be so much stress and so much anxiety-producing media that we're bombarded with. To take the time to find your own inner peace and to come to that solid place so that you have a foundation from which to live the rest of your life it makes all the difference in the world. Thanks, my friends. Talk with me in the comments. Can't wait to hear what you think of this. And if you give it a try, tell me what your anecdotal results are. So much love to you all. We'll talk with you in the comments.